ready for some bald shredding. Shredding, bald style on the th three pickup destroyer. <laughs> so much for joining me. Let's see who's here already. Jamie, Wasted Dude, Kib, Tom, Denny's Guitar Channel, Robert, Dan, Fitzpatrick, hell yeah, and another Dan, Dan Palmer, Time Surfing Alien, hey, 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 Rod, hello buddy, Crimson FPV, hmm, I don't recognize that name, so I'm wondering, uh, is this your first time in one of the live streams? But thank you so much for being here. Paul, brilliant. Killer. Thanks, dude. Tom, got the CD yesterday. Awesome. I'm glad it made it to you. I hope you still have a CD player to play it in. Right? Not everybody even has a CD player anymore. And I hope you like the guitar picks and all that stuff. So, how are we doing here on a fabulous Wednesday evening, guys? Luis! Luis, howdy, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Mitch, I know you're in there somewhere too, right? Mitch, you in there? Hey, Joshua Jones, first time in the live stream. Yes! You made it, first time, and hopefully not the last time. Okay, real, Smarticus! He enjoyed my riffin', thank you. You guys like that guitar? My three pickup uh, Phil Collin Def Leppard tribute guitar? John English, hello buddy. 
Robert, Eric, micro desktop with the CD built in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, Timothy, baby boy. Thanks for joining me. I love this guitar, guys. Um, because of, uh, you know, being such a huge Def Leppard fan and a Phil Collins fan and what it represents to me. And, like, this is when I first started playing guitar and the video for Photograph, you know, you just, just watch that video and look at that guitar going, wow, that looks like the most amazing thing ever. Um, it's not like my easiest playing guitar, you know, uh, it sounds good, but I mean, it's certainly for, as far as like feel and, and playability and all that stuff, um, some of my other guitars I would definitely prefer, and the upper fret access is really, really not good, but... I love it because it's just such a killer looking guitar, you know? Usually, well it used to be back there on the wall and then I moved it up there with that like sideways guitar um, rack holder, whatever you want to call it. So who else do we got in here? A bang Faith and Sienna. Hello Sienna. Mitch is there. I knew you were in there, Mitch. All right. Uh, Ing, Ing Can Cio. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I mean, I recognize the name. I know you've been in here before. Uh, oh, you want to know what I think about that angular Strandberg neck? Like the, um, that's the neck profile that was on those two headless Leo James guitars that I got from the NAMM show. It was just way too big and chunky and bulky for me. Definitely that kind of neck profile is not for me. I like the very thin D-shaped profile like a Jackson, you know. Uh, Sienna, this is not a real Ibanez destroyer. This is a replica, if you want to call it, that I had made from, I had a, cust a custom order from AliExpress from a few years ago. Um, because it's a guitar that I always wanted but, you know, they only made them for a brief time way back in the 80s. So when you do find them for sale now, they're really expensive and they're usually really beat up. Not in good condition. So I didn't want to pay $2,000 for a 35-year-old guitar that was just beat to heck. You know what I mean? New York Choke Cold in the house. And Doroteo. All righty. And JB, you just got some pizza, pizza? Well, if you were my next door neighbor, I would come over and have a slice. I really would, I swear. Cool. You know what I had for dinner? I had some chicken and some scallop potatoes and zucchini. And guess who made it? I made it! Yeah, that's right. I made it. It was pretty good, if I must say so myself. All right, guys, so um, I do have a, a few topics. Uh, if you read the video description or if you read the little caption on my community post from yesterday, um, I did mention a few of the topics that I wanted to cover. And the first one was about a potential sponsor. Now, in case you guys aren't aware, I get emails all the time uh, from companies asking me to do a video on their product. Sometimes it's guitar related, um, sometimes it's not guitar related but it's still music related, and other times it has absolutely nothing to do with guitar or music. Hey Dave, what's up dude? So this email that I got, this is, this is one of those cases, in fact I've got a few of them recently, just in like in the past week or so. Um, I think a lot of these companies, they, they are like, they are on their New Year holiday, like in January, maybe part of February, or maybe just in February, and they're all coming back from their uh, New Year holiday, you know, because a lot of them are based in China, and then now I'm starting to get these emails again, so let me read to you the description, I'm going to read, I'm going to read to you guys the email, and I think you're going to get a good laugh out of this probably. Um, if I can find it, hold on a second here, guys. Okay. <laughs> I 
I just saw another email, which I will talk about in just a minute. Uh, but i got to find the email. Where is it? Where is it? Is it that one? No, it's not that one. It's, um... Oh my goodness, I can't find it. It's not that one. It's not that one. I had it pulled up and then it disappeared. Oh, here it is. Here it is, guys. Okay. Oh, Crimson, it's your second time for the live. Okay, cool. I'm glad you made it back for a second time. Thank you so much for your kind words and checking out my videos. All right, guys. You want to hear this email? Here we go. Here's I'm going to read I'm going to read it to you the whole thing word for word. It's not very long. Hi, the bald shredder. My name is Tracy from a company that has a lot of sales of Amazon. We're promoting the best hair dryers and hair removal devices on YouTube. <clears throat> I hope you guys are seeing the irony in this already. Let me finish the email. We are currently looking for influencers like you to collaborate. If you would like to know more about products and promotions, we would be happy to provide you with all the information you want to know. And I also want to know your rate of one dedicated YouTube video. Looking forward to your reply. Best regards. Okay. Uh, what, do I even need to do any commentary on that? I mean, do I? Well, I don't need to, but I'm going to anyway. Okay, so what this... What, what this shows us, guys, is that these companies send out emails to people that do YouTube, or YouTube videos, people like me, right? Um, but they send out the emails, and I know, obviously, they haven't even looked at a single one of my videos. Yeah, obviously. Because, first of all, this is a guitar channel you know, hard rock, 80s music, something to do with that at least. Um, second of all, why would I need a hair removal product? My hair is already removed. If anything, I need a hair growth. Like, hello, Rogaine, send me an email for a video. I'll be totally down for that. But no, it's the opposite. Hair removal when my hair is already removed. And then on top of that, which I really don't understand this part, is the hair dryer. Okay, so, so not only are they offering me hair removal when I already have no hair, maybe it's just a sick joke to, to tease me. And then it's also a hair dryer. Well, I don't have any hair to dry. What do I need a hair dryer for? And how am I going to demonstrate that? It's just ridiculous, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm one, uh, Tom said tell him 20 k I'm tempted to, to reply back and be like, yeah, I'll do it for $1,000. Which I would expect them to just, they wouldn't even reply. And I think what happens sometimes, guys, on these is that when the, the influencer, if you want to call me an influencer, when the influencer replies, then they look at the channel and go, Oh, wait a minute, that's not really gonna work for our product. And then they don't reply back. Even if I said, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do it for free, that sounds great. And then they might look at my channel and go, hmm, no, that, that's not gonna work. But um, yeah, hair removal, hair dryer, that's just like, so yeah, for sure, they don't know anything about me. And um, a lot of times, a lot of times guys, they didn't say it in this email, but usually in the email, they'll say, we're big fans of your videos. We've been watching your videos for a long time and we really like what you're doing. They usually say that. But then the product will be something like this where it's totally obvious they've never watched one second of one of my videos. And I always just laugh at that. I just think, ah, it's ridiculous. But anyway, um, yeah, guys, so... I hope I'm not disappointing anybody by saying I will not be doing a hair removal product video and I will not be doing a hair dryer video because, yeah, as some of you guys are saying, 
it, it would have to be Metal Dude, right? Metal Dude would have to be at least doing the hair dryer one, but hair removal? Well, how? What am I supposed to do that? Am I supposed to like you know, Metal Dude, lay down. We're gonna let me take off your shirt. I'm gonna put this hair removal on your back so we can take off all your back hair or whatever. I mean, it's just it's just silly, right? Um, another one that I got, guys. Another one that I got was for again which makes it seem obvious that they do not look at the videos. And I just got this one a couple days ago. It is for a porch light. You know, like the porch, like in front of your front door and you up, up in this, like the, the roof or the ceiling or whatever that's right, up, right outside your door. It's like kind of like a square thing and it's made of glass. And then inside you got your little light bulb and it's right on your porch outside your front door. So that's what the product was. And um, I didn't even reply to that because what, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to do a video of myself standing outside on the ladder trying to install this light. And you guys are going to all see me electrocute myself as I'm trying to install a light outside. So, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, Chad, yeah, you missed the shredding on the destroyer, dude. In case you guys haven't figured it out, I am now starting my live streams right at 7 with the guitar playing and the shredding. So if you want to see the best shredding and the guitar playing, you got to be here right at 7. And I'll play it a little bit more, a little bit later. But yeah, that's, that's the time to catch the shredding, right at 7. Um, so uh, Mr. Mr. JW says the... the, the Firebird, actually it's Freebird, not Firebird, is a hair removal item. That is true, but that's a shaver. And in their, in their description, I think what they're talking about is like one of those laser hair removal things. I think it said IPL um, or something like that. And that's like a laser thing where like you click it and it, you know, it's like laser hair removal, that kind of thing. I don't think you'd want to use it on your head, so I have no use for that. The Freebird Head Shaver, yeah, I gotta use that like every other day. So that, that totally goes with the theme of the channel. Not laser hair removal, not a hair dryer. Yeah, hmm. Okay, on to the, this is kind of a funny one, and I don't want you guys to take this too seriously, because uh, I, I just kind of did it, because I just thought it would be kind of, like, it was one of those things like, hey, why not? You know, if, if nobody ever does it, no big deal. Um, if a few, a few people do it, hey, that's cool too. I'll have fun with it. But I'm talking about Cameo. I'm talking about Cameo. You know Cameo where you can buy um, like short videos from different celebrities? And not that I'm a celebrity because I, am, I definitely do not consider myself a celebrity. But I, I was almost did it just to see if like if they would accept me. So I thought, you know, they, uh, I thought, I don't know if they're going to, like, accept my application. It wasn't really an application. You just go on their website. It asks you, like, what's your name? Um, what platform do you use? And for me, it's YouTube. And then they give you ranges, like, well, how many follow followers do you have? Like, less than 10,000, between 10 and 20, or between 20 and 30. And that was my category, between 20 and 30. And what's, uh, I had to put, you know, the URL for my... Um, for my YouTube channel, and then, you know, I'm called The Bald Shredder, and I had, um, that was basically it. And then I submitted it, and they approved me, like, immediately. It was like, you're approved, you're in. I was like, whoa, really? So, uh, um, anyway, and then the, the cost of the cameo, uh, the whole time I was doing it, I was thinking, well, what, what price am I going to put? Obviously, it's not going to be something like $99, because that would be ridiculous. Um, but after they approve you, and you go, in, you go in the app on your phone, you do everything on your phone. It's not on the computer. Um, they suggest the price. So the price for a cameo from me, or Metal Dude, is $15. One five. And that's what they suggested to me, because they said, other people with about the same size following, that's what they charge and it works for them. So, anyway, 
So yeah, guys, I'm on Cameo if you want a video from me or from Metal Dude. $15, you know, length of the video, I don't know, a couple minutes, a few minutes. Maybe you want to um, say like, yeah, I want, I want you to do a video jamming on and then uh, one of my, one particular guitar. Or you want to ask me questions about, you know, talk about who your early influences were. I don't know. what It, it could be anything, guys. Really. And I see that Jamie, the president of my fan club, saying that she put in a request for a cameo. And by the way, Jamie, I saw that email. When I was looking for the email about the hair removal and the hair dryer, the email popped into my box saying, somebody requested a cameo. And it was from Jamie, so I will be taking a look at that later, Jamie, and I will be fulfilling your request. So, huge thank you to Jamie for being my first ever cameo requester. First and last? Who knows? We'll have to see, right? Yeah. So, anyway. And Johnny Bean says he's on cameo too. Okay, well that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Johnny, have you gotten any video requests? Like, has anybody purchased a video from me, from you? Just out of curiosity. Honestly, guys, I, I just did it kind of like on a lark. It only took a few minutes, literally, not even five minutes, upload my little picture, and then, um, you know, I posted it on uh, like a YouTube community update, I posted it on Facebook and on Instagram, and I thought, let's just see if anybody actually does this. and. Well, we got one. We got one. My number one fan, Jamie. So, anyway, yeah, if you want to find me on Cameo, you just have to go uh, Cameo the Ball Shredder. You'll find it easily. It's the same little picture that you see on YouTube with the blue background and me holding the purple monsoon. Alrighty, so what else are we saying here? Robert wants to know how did I get so good on guitar? You know, there's no secret, Robert. It's just years and years of playing and practice. I wasn't so good in the beginning. Like, the first 10, 15 years, I, I, didn't, I would not consider myself to be great. I was not one of those players that was, like, instantly great. It was just a lot of practicing over and over and getting better over a long period of time. And even now, I don't consider myself to be, like, phenomenal. You know, there are a lot of players, my heroes... Like, Paul Gilbert, George Lynch, and I watch those guys, and I'm just like, I'll never be as good as those guys, so. But anyway, yeah, just a lot of practice, man. Uh, Marshall says I should charge at least 25, and that will bring me respect. Yeah, I know Cameo's going to take a cut, obviously, of course. Um, but, you know, until, until I get people actually buying the $15 video, I can't be raising the price, you know, right now there's no demand other than Jamie, so that's, that's the one. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, if it never goes anywhere, that's fine anyway, it's no big deal. That's, doing cameo videos is not my focus, it's YouTube videos with you guys. That's my focus. Captain Craig, hello, dude, happy Wednesday. Shane, Timothy, uh, yep, yep. I segued my natural born talent as a pinball wizard. Hmm. Is that a reference to my pinball head? Maybe. Uh, Dr. Burb says he's hoping to make something out of, uh, out of an Amazon axe, and it was inspired by me and a few others, okay? Like, you mean you got a guitar on Amazon, and you're going to do a bunch of modifications to it or something? Is that what you mean? If so, that's cool. Thanks, Dave. Hmm. Um, what's the URR? Uh, uh, Timothy, you're talking about for Cameo? I don't have it. I could go in there and grab it right now, but it's if you just Google Cameo, the ball shredder, I'm sure you would find me because I don't think there's anybody else on Cameo called the ball shredder. It should be really easy to find. Ways to do, do I do much major maintenance on my guitar collection? No, not really. Um, it depends.
depending on the time of the year, uh, I might need to turn the truss rod a little bit, you know, because the neck might like tighten up or loosen. Or most of the time, it's just tuning the guitars because you know I live here in Southern California where we don't have drastic weather changes, and it's pretty dry. Um, but like on the the Destroyer here, I hadn't played this in quite a while, and all the strings were really sharp because like in the cold weather they have a tendency tendency to tighten up and so I had to like you know lower the tuning on all of the strings but that only took up like a minute all of my arrangements rock thank you Timothy I appreciate that oh you got one of the West Creek types okay cool I have yet to try um, one of those I haven't tried one of those, um, but eventually, maybe I will. J-R-I. Hey, dude. Thanks for coming in. Still waiting on your neck. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Captain Craig, you were looking for the Volgoa TN2, and they're pretty much gone. Hmm. Um, Captain Craig, I still have mine, the one that I did the video on. You're talking about the telly, the one that I called the super telly that had the two humbuckers. Um, send me a message later, dude, because, um, I, I'm probably not going to hang on to that one forever. So, Craig, send me a message later if you're interested in talking about that, uh, Volgoa that I have. You're welcome, Paul. So, Paul, you uh, you got the the black monsoon from the Leo James booth at uh, at the Nam Show. That's the one you got from the Nam Show, I think. Because I think I took all the other ones. By the way, guys, I still have one monsoon on eBay. It is the light purple quilted maple top monsoon. It's on eBay right now for two seventy five plus two seventy five plus shipping. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me just say this about that monsoon I have, guys. So I just mentioned that the monsoon's on eBay for $275. If any of you guys, I'm going to make you a special deal. If anybody wants to buy the monsoon, the purple one, the quilted top, that's on eBay, if you want to send me the money directly on PayPal and market friends and family, I will sell it to you for $250 plus shipping, plus whatever the shipping and um, depending on where you are in the United States, the shipping could be anywhere from like 20 to $50. Just depends on what state you're in. If anybody's interested in that, um, you can send me a message on either Facebook or Instagram, or you can send me an email, richardjamesguitar at gmail.com. Uh, J-R-I, yeah. Definitely. SoCal weather is really great as far as not having to like, you know, do major adjustments on your guitars in the winter and then in the spring and then in the summer because of all the climate changes and stuff. Um, because, you know, we are, the weather here just, just doesn't change that drastically. Yeah. Hello, Brian's Gate. What's up, dude? Um, I, every time I try to grab links and put them in there, they always get all messed up. But let me see. Well, you know what? It's, it's super easy, guys. All you have to do is go into eBay and search um, Leo James Monsoon. Or go into eBay and search for the Bald Shredder. And you'll see one of my listings, probably with the guitar picks. And click on that and click on other listings. Yeah. Tom, oh, you got the Les Paul. Okay, cool, very cool. Wasted dude, you want to know how much playing time I actually fit in every day? I don't even play every day, not even close to every day. I go several days sometimes without even playing. It just depends on how busy my schedule is. Um, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm, so I'm filming a video and then I'm editing the video. That takes a lot of time. Of course, I got to go to work full time. This is, you know, this is not my full time job. Family stuff to take care of, and, and a host of other stuff. So 
I don't even practice every day. If I wasn't doing the YouTube channel and I wasn't doing the live streams on Wednesday and you know recording and editing videos, then I'd probably have time to practice like just about every day. But with everything going on, um, yeah, I don't have even have time to practice every single day. And usually when I am playing and practicing, I don't just sit there and, and just practice like whatever. I'm usually working out the parts for the next jam that I'm recording uh, for the next guitar review. So I'm usually either, you know, I'm on my computer, I'm programming the drums, I'm recording the rhythms and the bass guitar parts, and then I'm playing over the top of it, working out the parts, trying to come up with the parts for that particular song, and then I play those a lot. So that's usually what my practice consists of. Um, hmm. Yep, yep, that Leo James company rep at NAM was legit good guy sounding. Um, if you're talking about the guy at the NAM show in the Leo James booth, that was Leo. He's the owner of the company. That's him. He's the guy that, you know, uh, did you see the interview that I did with him on my channel very recently? Um, yeah, that's Leo. Leo. Mr. Leo. Alan, thank you so much. My demos are second to none. I really appreciate that. Dave, thank you. Thank you as well. 7-Eleven keeps the guy busy. You know it does. You know, that Slurpee machine's not going to clean itself, you know? Right? And somebody's got to put those chicken wings in the little window display. So it might as well be me. Yeah. Oh, you did see the interview. Okay, awesome. Cool. Very cool. Uh, Luis, no, I do not have any Rockman equipment. Way back in the 80s, in my very early years of playing guitar, like first few years, I had a thing that was like a Rockman, but it wasn't a Rockman. It was like an off-brand, you know, kind of a copy one. Um, but it looked just like a Rockman, and you know, you could listen with the headphones, and it didn't really sound very good. It wasn't didn't have like a good distorted tone. It was okay. But yeah, I don't have any Rockman stuff. Never really used it. And yes, I do know Def Leppard used the Rockman to record all the guitar parts on Hysteria, which is kind of mind-blowing. Like, when I first read that, I was like, really? Wow. They really made it sound good. Guys, uh, and just so you know, I mean, I, I think you can tell with the sarcasm, I don't really work at 7-Eleven. That's just kind of an ongoing joke. Yeah. I do shop there sometimes, though. Yeah. Big gulp. Okay, um, so another thing that I wanted to talk about. What else did I have listed in the description? So I talked about Cameo. I talked about uh, the, uh, the funny sponsor with the hair removal thing. Let's see here. <clears throat> Ah, one thing that I really wanted to talk about, guys, and it's really important for me, and I, I, I've, I've been really touched by some of your comments recently. Some of you guys have been uh, leaving me some really, really nice co uh, comments in, on the videos with a lot of compliments and saying a lot of nice things. And not that that's a new thing, it's not. And a lot of you guys have been leaving nice comments for a long time. Uh, you and I feel like this is, is, you're not just like, oh, it's just people that comment on my videos. I feel more like this is a community because the same people, most of the time, keep coming back week after week to the live streams. And I recognize most of the names, a lot of the names. And, um, and it just it's, it kind of feels like you, you guys are my buddies, you know, not not just, oh, those are my subscribers. Just, I feel more of a, a connection. But anyway, um, I'm going to read, I'm going to read a few of the comments that have been um, left recently. Now, um, I'm just going to read a few, guys, but... 
if I don't read your comment, don't take it personally. Like, well, why aren't you reading my comment? I, I get hundreds of comments, right? If you look at, like, one video might have a uh, hundred and something comments, and then the next video a hundred and something, or maybe two hundred. And so I just quickly, right before the live stream, just kind of scanned through and tried to find a few comments that I thought would be nice to read during the live stream. So if I don't read your particular comment, don't, don't get mad about it. If I liked and hearted your comment, then you know I saw your comment. I hearted it because I liked it. And I really make an effort to go through and see people's comments and to acknowledge that you guys left comments. I see so many YouTubers, even YouTubers that have less views and less, less subs than, than me, that almost completely ignore the comments. They barely go through and like heart or like anything. And they practically don't reply to anything. And to me, I th I'm just like, why would you do that? That's, that's your community. Those are the people watching the video. If it wasn't for them, there would be nothing. Right? I don't know. So I, I just think like, I'm always going to try to take the time and make an effort. I know it, it gets harder and harder as the views get more and more and as the comments get more and more. Obviously, if you're somebody like, you know, Rick Beato and he's got thousands of comments, there's no way he can go in and reply to all of them. But for somebody like me, anyway. Okay, so I'm going to read a uh, part of a comment. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And he's in here. I already saw him. He's in here. He's probably going to know that this was his comment. So this is what it says. Hey, one other thing. YouTube is weird in a way. I mean, we don't know each other for squat. But in a lot of ways, you've been a good friend to me and all your other viewers. So from my corner of the room, I just want to say thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I'm sure we all do. I guess I should, I should do this, right? Is that how, how you do it? The heart thingy? There you go. I read that one the other day and I was like, Oh, oh, I, I feel like Sally Field. Remember when Sally Field did that um, Academy Award acceptance speech and she was like, you like me, you really like me. Anyway, so that was the very, very nice. Very, very nice. And I appreciate that kind of thing. Um, let me read another one. This one's much shorter and I think he might be in here as well. Let's see, let's see. It just says, I think this was from my, my headless guitar video this week. Absolutely gorgeous arrangement, as always. Love you, man. Remember that movie, Love You, Man? Wasn't that a movie called Love You, Man? So, I mean, that's obviously a very nice comment, too. And I don't take that in any kind of weird way, you know, love you, man. It's like, it's like yeah, I really like you, man. Love what you're doing. That's And again, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, you really like me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, anyway, here's another one. This is a, the third and final one that I'm going to read because I could be here all night reading these guys. I could. I could be here all night. Seriously. Can't wait. Love your channel. And you are amazing. Thank you for what you do for us. And most of all, thank you for being you. Lots of love from Dayton, Ohio. Your biggest fan, and then his name. Well, he said he's my biggest fan. I think I have a lot of biggest fans, which is, which is great. That's amazing, right? And he said, thank you for being you. For being bald? You're welcome, dude. I will do my best to keep it up. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, I just, I'm going to say it again, guys. I want you to know, want you to know how much I appreciate you guys coming to the live streams, uh, people that do the super chat, you know, donating the money when you don't have to, but you do it anyway, um, leaving comments, you know, I might have a video that's got like 
I don't know, let's say 5,000 views, but there's only 100 comments, which means it's a very small percentage of people leaving the comments. And to me, like, those are the diehards, and those are the ones that, are, that you know, are really into it. And you guys coming to the live stream, you're the diehards. You're the dedicated fans. Like, you guys are it. You guys are it. And if it wasn't for you guys, I just, I would have gave up a long time ago. Because without the views, without the subs, if a channel just goes nowhere, then, you know, eventually a person gives up. But you guys have made it all possible. So... Really awesome. Alrighty, so let's see here. Um, let's see what people are saying. Luis, thank you. I will definitely stay away from your beer. I don't drink beer. Robert, Michigan loves me. Thank you very much. Rich, another Richard. Cool, you're in here. Awesome, dude. Johnny, you're kind of... Bald. I think you meant bald, not blad. Take your hat off, Johnny. Let it shine. You wonder if I can collab with Kathy on a set of scarred pickups. I don't know. That would be up to her. Kib. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yep, yep. Uh, yes. I've been doing live streams every Wednesday, 7 p.m. California time. Brian's Gate, that is correct. Every time I see Brian's Gate, I'm like, oh boy, what's he gonna say this time? But you know, I always have a, I always have a, a, a good comeback for your comments, so. Right, so that's cool. Thanks guys, thanks, appreciate all of it. Oh, and um, let's see, what was the other thing I was gonna talk about? RJ's Cave. You made it. Very cool, RJ. RJ, you just mit missed my whole huge speech about how much I love my audience and how this is like a family and you guys aren't just my viewers and my subscribers, you're like my friends. This is more like, like a friendship, I think, which is really cool. And that's, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I, I like doing the weekly live more than the videos because I'm, I'm interacting with you guys like right now you know I can see what you're saying you get to ask me questions I get to respond it's a lot more fun than uh, just recording the regular videos so <clears throat> yep yep wants to know what's my favorite guitar that I own it is it's pretty tough to narrow it down to my favorite one um it might be this one, my Charvel DK24. That's a pretty awesome guitar. But, you know, of course I love the Monsoon, and I love the, the custom ones that I made, which is all on the back wall there. I mean, I love just about all of them, but that Charvel is uh, pretty awesome. Jamie! Jamie is not going to relinquish her spot as the number one ball shredder fan. She's like, oh no, oh no, that guy said he was my number one fan, but Jamie's like, uh-uh, mm-mm, me. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, New York chokehold. You know, that, that brings up a good point, because I, I was going to mention this, but I totally forgot. He's saying I should respond to the negative or the, the mean comments. You know I get those like all the time guys. And even though we like we have a great group of guys and most of the people watching my videos are supportive and if you guys saw like the percentage of the thumbs up it's almost always really close to 100%. So it's a very small percentage of people that like thumb down or leave what I call a poopy comment or a crappy comment. Um, and a lot of times those comments come on of course the AliExpress videos the Timu videos, um, even on the pickup videos. You know that pickup comparison that I just did last week with the Music Lily pickups, showing that they actually sounded better than the Seymour Duncan pickups? Even on that video, there's people who are like, this video is useless, those videos are garbage, blah, 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 you know. 
there's always going to be turds in the punch bowl, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, I just, I hit banned. You're out of here. Delete comment. Goodbye. I, I don't want to, like, spend too much, like, time and effort. Sometimes I'll respond to their comments, which I probably shouldn't, because it's kind of just, like, you're feeding the trolls. Um, oh, I will give you guys an example. I will give you guys an example of somebody who went into my one of into one of my videos and left a comment. I'll I'll tell you the video that it was. Hold on. It was for this guitar. I don't know if you guys remember this video. It's the IYV like acoustic copy. You know th that was a Fender guitar. Fender has the acoustic which is a very expensive guitar. So I did the review on the IYV version, which is a very nice guitar. The video is on my channel. And this guy left a comment a few days ago, and he said, Oh, thank goodness Fender put a stop to those garbage guitars. Uh, I can't remember exactly he said it. The comment is still there. Actually, if you go to this video and you look up like the newest comments, you'll probably find it. And basically he said, it's junk and made in China. All they do is copy everything we do and, and talking down and saying that it's Chinese junk, right? And then, um, so the hilarious part about that, guys, is that IYV is made in Vietnam. So I replied and I said, uh, wrong. Um, IYV is made in Vietnam and has nothing to do with China. And I was like, LOL. And then he replied again to that and said, Oh, well, it might be made in Vietnam, but it's owned by a Chinese company. Um, and then when something about the slave labor, and I was like, Ugh. So then I replied again and I said, Wrong again, buddy. IYV is owned by... Inyen Vina, I think that's, uh, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, let me see. It doesn't stay on the back. I think it's Inyen Vina. And Inyen Vina is a South Korean company. And I was like, dude, it's got nothing to do with China. Get off your China soapbox. I didn't say that in the comment, but that's basically what I was saying. I was like, serious LOL. Because the guy just kept sticking his foot in his mouth. Oh, it's made in China. No, it's not. And by the way, if it was made in China, I wouldn't care anyway. Uh, I have tons of stuff made in China. But he kept insisting that it was China and that it was slave labor. And it's like, hmm, made in Vietnam. And the company is a South Korean company. And I know that for a fact. And after that, he had nothing to say. Because he just make, kept making himself look like a moron. So, anyway... Yeah. I'm gonna hang that back up. Alrighty, guys. Yeah, I mean, guys, you can get junky guitars anywhere. I am never gonna say all guitars made in China are fabulous. They're all fantastic. No, no, no. Definitely not. I've had pieces of junk that were made in China. Uh, but I've also had junky guitars that were made in other countries. Um, I have fantastic guitars that were made in China. And I have fantastic guitars that were made in Mexico, um, in the United States, Vietnam, obviously, from IYV. And, you know, it's, you never know what you're going to get. Especially when you buy this stuff made in China. Because de depending on, you know, what, what they're, like, selling it for and... There's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors. So, anyway. I'm trying to think. I think there was... Was there one other thing I was going to talk about? So, see, I went over the hair removal and the hair dryer. Oh, I know! Okay, guys. YouTube. Unsubbing people. Right? That's been a topic a couple of times in my last couple of videos where I mention... And you guys, some of you guys have been telling me, I know Jamie told me, and a few other people, and you've been mention it, mentioning it in the comments of the videos, saying that YouTube keeps 
unsubscribing you. And you're watching the video and you see the little thing that says subscribe, and you're like, I never unsubscribed. Uh, so, um, anyway, yesterday I went into the help section of YouTube and I got into a live chat with somebody and I'm trying to explain to him the problem and I'm telling him what you guys are telling me. Hey, uh, people are telling me that they're getting unsubscribed and they resubscribe and then some of you, like one particular guy, he said it's like eight to ten times. It's like it just keeps happening over and over. And so I'm telling the, the help guy, he sh he's there to help me, right? And I'm telling him that this is happening. And the guy looks at my channel, he looks at my analytics, and he says, um, no, that doesn't happen. No, YouTube doesn't do that. And then he's looking at my numbers and he's going, see, look, and he gave me a link to the analytics page which showed, like, subscriber information, like, how many subscribers I've got in the past 28 days. And it even showed, like, how many people have unsubscribed. And I tried to tell him, I go, well, that's not really going to be helpful because those people that unsubscribe, they immediately resubscribed, probably. And even if it's only, you know, 12 people, 13 people, 20 people, if it's not that many, it shouldn't even be happening to one people. But he basically just said, um, no, it's not happening. And then he gave me like a pre-written list of like things that could be happening. And one of them, guys, was like, oh, the viewer is accidentally hitting the unsubscribe thing. Really? You know when you unsubscribe, it pops up with a little confirmation like, are you sure you want to unsubscribe? I think it does, doesn't it? So I don't think it, it could, that's not the case. And then he tries to tell me like, um, that they're like dead YouTube channels. Like they're, they, nobody's logged into it, nobody's using it, and they delete those old accounts that nobody uses anymore. I'm like, okay, well it's not that either because they're in my videos right now telling me. Um, I'm trying to think of what the other reasons were. The other one was, he said something about like, saying people that have at least 1,000 subscribers, like you guys, he's talking about you guys, the viewers, if you have a thousand subs on your YouTube channel. A lot of you guys don't even have a YouTube channel, so it's kind of ridiculous. He was saying that um, there's some glitch that it might show, it might say that you're not subscribed, but really you're still subscribed. It just says that you're not, but you still are. So I don't know what to think, guys. You know, he just kept kind of giving me the runaround, and I'm like, so there's nothing you can do? And he was like, there's nothing to do. There's, basically, he's saying that you guys are lying. Because he's saying it just couldn't be happening. And I was like, mmm. And, and finally I was like, okay, all right, well, uh, thank you. Bye. I mean, because was, he wasn't going to do anything other than show me this pre-written, you know, they got the response ready to go. So, whatever. Yeah, what are you going to do? What can I do? I think the only thing I can do, and this is what I'm going to start doing, guys. Um, <clears throat> and you guys probably notice, like, in my videos, except for the last couple, um, when I did the Les Paul video, and then I did the Headless video, that I don't usually say in the video, hey guys, can you consider subscribing to my channel? You know, there are some YouTubers they ask in every single video. And I don't have a problem with that, but it was just always something that like, I was just figured like, if people want to subscribe, they're going to subscribe. I, I probably don't need to ask them to subscribe. I just thought like, oh, it doesn't make a difference. If I ask or if I don't ask, I figure if you want to subscribe, you'll subscribe. But here's what I noticed, guys. So I talked about that in the Les Paul video. I had 
way more new subscribers in that video than normal. And then in the headless video from two days ago on Monday, I mentioned it again, saying, you know, YouTube, I, I, I know some people have been getting unsubscribed and please check your status and if you're not subscribed, subscribe. So guess what? A lot more new subscribers on that video than normal. So I guess probably on a regular basis or a semi-regular basis, um, I'm probably just going to say real quick in each video, maybe starting next week, I don't know, like, hey guys, um, if you're not subscribed, could you please consider subscribing right now? Please? It would mean the world to me. Thank you. I won't be that dramatic about it, but I guess it helps, you know? It's like, I, so, yeah, I noticed in the, the last two videos from the last two Mondays, me mentioning it, way more new subscribers. So I guess I need to do that. So I hope that doesn't annoy anybody in the future videos, me saying, hey, if you're not subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing. And I don't want to sound like I'm copying Guitar Max too much because he does that in every video. And that was kind of one of the reasons that I didn't do it because I don't want to seem like, dude, you're copying Guitar Max in everything you do. Um, but obviously, he does it and it works and he does it for a reason. So I should be like, hmm, yeah, there's a reason why he does that. And he's got 205,000 subscribers, so it's probably something that I should do. Anyway, wow, it's almost 8 o'clock already, and I only played guitar one time at the beginning, so guess what, guys? I'm going to play some guitar right now. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of talking. My voice is getting pretty sore here. You guys want to hear some more jamming on the Destroyer copy? Do you? Do you? Alrighty guys, here we go. see my best shredding and my best jamming, it is best to come in right at the beginning of the video because I'm always warming up right before the video starts, like probably like 6.45, I'm, I'm warming up and shredding and shredding, and then right at 7 o'clock, I'm pretty warmed up and I'll be playing pretty well. And then like right now, you know, I've been sitting here talking for like the past hour, 
and my hands got a little bit colder, so yeah, I think the best shredding is always going to be right at the beginning of the live stream. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that. Okay guys, now if I missed anything in the comments, like there was a, like a burning question that you wanted to ask or something really important or something you wanted to say, put it in the comments again. I'm going to pay close attention to the comment section here and we'll stay on here for another, I don't know, five, ten minutes maybe. Johnny, later dude, thanks for stopping by. Thanks Rod, I'm glad you liked that. Yeah guys, hit the like button if you like that, I would really appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed, maybe you would consider subscribing right now. But I'm guessing you guys are probably all subscribed. Thank you Captain Craig. Uh, Mark, I am not using any pedals. I am plugged into my Line 6 audio interface, which goes right into my computer, and I'm using Line 6 Pod Farm software. That's all software, Line 6 Pod Farm, that I bought like 15 years ago. If you look in my videos, if you search the Bald Shredder 80s Tone Secrets Reveal or something like that, I did a whole video on it. Luis, I think I just answered your question, right? Line 6 Pod Farm, search my, go in, go in YouTube and search Bald Shredder 80s Tone, and you should find the video. Good night, Timothy, thank you. Uh, wasted Dude, no, I've never tried to see how many notes per second. I'm pretty sure it would not be 30, like Man of War. Big Kahuna, I'm not a fan of the Vs because... They're very awkward for me to hold and play sitting down. Um, I don't know if I do any economy picking or not. I think it's mostly just a lot of alternate picking. Mannequin Army! Thank you! Rusty! Hey! You're here! Thanks, guys! Lester! My good buddy, Lester! Coming in right at the end. Ethan is the man. What's up, dude? The controls. Marlon wants to know the controls on the... Okay, guess what, Marlon? I don't have the middle pickup even wired up. It's only wired for the, the bridge and the neck pickup. And I accidentally wired the toggle backwards. So when it's in the up position, that's the bridge pickup. And when it's in the down position, it's the neck pickup. Also on the three knobs, there's three. I don't, I'm not even using the middle one. It's one volume and one tone. That's it. The middle pickup is just for looks. And by the way, by the way a little trivia. When Phil Collin was playing his three pickup destroyer, he never used the middle pickup. He said that. I think I read that in his book. Do I have any semi-hollow guitars? Yes, I have a glary Telecaster. Um, I can't show it to you because it's like in, in a case in the closet somewhere. Um, it's like one of those tellies with like the F hole at the top that's like a semi-hollow. But I don't have one of those big like 335 guitars. Not yet. <clears throat> what is my goofiest guitar? Uh, hmm. Good question. I don't know. I don't know what I would really consider. Okay, I know what my goofiest guitar is. Did you see the video um, that I did probably last month where I took two guitars and bolted them together and Metal Dude tried to play a double neck guitar at the same time. That was definitely my goofiest guitar. Two guitars bolted together, trying to make like a Michelangelo guitar. That was my most ridiculous guitar, that's for sure. Um, Rod, it's funny you mention the redid 335. Uh, because um, I have reviewed several of the Redid and the Volgoa guitars, and um, the guy sent them to me for the review. And he told me like a few weeks ago that he was going to send me their new 335 model 
But he, uh, he hasn't sent it to me yet. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. So if he does, I'll have a video on that. Paul, yeah, the chocolate chip guitar. That was uh, the chocolate chip guitar was one half of the double neck, and that was definitely my my most ridiculous guitar. Yes, I know who the do is. I don't know him personally, of course. Nobody knows who the do is, right? That's part of his thing. Um, but I did not see that video. Okay, guys, so I think that's going to about wrap it up for today. Um, let me see if there's any tidbits I can give you guys. Be sure to don't miss my channel on Monday. I'm going to have a very special guest in my video on Monday. And no, I'm not talking about Metal Dude. I'm talking about an actual other person that will be here in the room with me in the video on Monday. Also guys, I'm supposed to have another video up on Friday. The video is done, but I'm not sure if it's going to be put up on Friday or not. I will talk about it next Wednesday in the live stream because there's something happening with the company and I really don't want to say because it could be nothing or it could be something. So I may or may not have another uh, review of something up on Friday. So be on the lookout for that on Friday. If it doesn't come out on Friday, well, then that means there was a problem and something happened. And I'll be talking about it next Wednesday in the live stream. So anyway, uh, Robert, do I ever play a nylon, nylon string guitar? No, I have, of course, in, in my life, um, but I don't have any. I don't have any nylon string guitars. Papa Blue, what's up, dude? Will the special guest be Chuck Norris? Maybe. Also, guys, probably at some point in April, I'm going to have another really special guest here on the channel. And I'm really looking forward to that one, so... That'll probably be uh, sometime in April. Alrighty, guys. So, once again, thanks everybody. Shane, Ethan, Kip Scott, Steve, Joe, Louise, Papa Blue, Jamie, Tom, Dana. How much music theory do I know? Very little. And that is a serious answer. Wasted dude. See you guys next week. Remember, be on the lookout Friday for a new video. And Monday, for sure, for a new video. All right, guys, I'm going to count it down. 10, 9, 8, 7. No, it will not be Leo James. He was already on the channel in my interview. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And...